Did you know that broad targeting is literally coded into Facebook software? Even though it's been literally proven to work for years, there are still a vast majority of advertisers who treat Facebook in 2023 like Google in 2014, doing silly things like lookalike and interest groups or act alike and affinity audiences. Broad targeting is a gold mine that is still waiting to be tapped. So today we're gonna explore the the potential of broad targeting and how you can avoid paying extra money to make a lot less and stop working harder and harder to make your business's bottom line much, much smaller than it deserves to be. This one's gonna be fun. That being said, let's get to it. Broad targeting is a marketing strategy where you let the Facebook software work as it was designed. Basically, here's what happens. If you show your ad to a thousand people and 500 people like it and 500 people hate it, well, the next 1,000 people that see your ad are going to look a lot like those that showed an interest in your ad and exhibited a behavior that met Facebook's business objective. What this means is that ads do the targeting. Facebook knows what content people want to see. Facebook knows what topics people are interested in. Facebook knows what products people are in market to buy and what services they're trying to hire for. The marketing funnel that Facebook takes advantage of is far greater than just your website. There's a thing called advanced matching. And advanced matching basically says that when somebody fires an ad to cart on your store, it actually ties into the global ad to cart advanced matching audience. Which means that when somebody's looking for a product from one of your competitors, and they've ultimately abandoned cart. Facebook sees that as a signal of, oh, somebody's interested in this product and they've liked this type of content. Well, they weren't interested in that product, but we have one from another advertiser and they have content this person wants to see. Let's do them a favor and show them that this content, that is you doing bottom of funnel retargeting to your competitors. And you can do that at scale to steal business from big brands at a way that is extremely profitable Profitable, but if you're not using advanced matching, if you're fighting the wind, if you are ultimately still using targeting audiences to pay more, to exclude the vast majority of people that want to see your content from seeing your ads, you're paying way too much money to get far worse results than you deserve. The power of broad targeting. Broad targeting allows you to reach a much wider audience than interest groups do. A much wider audience than lookalikes do. Think of a 1% lookalike not as a hyper-focused, super high-quality audience. No, no. Think of it as paying extra to exclude 99% of people that want to see your content. The point here is that, simply put, targeting audiences, using audiences to focus your ad, is something that is obsolete in the world of Facebook. Let me tell you why. When I started on Facebook ads, we quite literally had to edit it with Excel and hit upload. Then came this beautiful thing called Power Editor that looks a lot like the Facebook Ads Manager you're used to seeing today where you can make bulk changes. You don't have to do one move and then hit go, one move and hit go, or upload everything from some offline database. Now at the time, much like you see in display and programmatic advertising, which remember, Facebook advertising started as an alternative to these other solutions. Instead of the way that display and programmatic works where it's random distribution in any user that you select as being eligible. So what you have to do is only select those folks that have the highest levels of intent or greatest signals. So the only people eligible are the ones that you think best are going to like it. So basically, yeah, it's completely random. Yes, I'm hoping to get lucky, but I'm going to try to narrow the focus. I'm going to target my ads towards the people who are most likely to have the highest click through rate. In 2017, Facebook started implementing this thing called advanced matching and broad targeting 
which effectively made that obsolete because it prioritized the end user experience and allowed ads to do the targeting. It allowed the end user's experience to be filled with things that they wanted to see, not with everything that their signals showed that they might have an interest in. There was a period of time where you quite literally saw everything in your Instagram feed chronologically. You saw every piece of content from every family member, from every page you ever liked, from every group you were ever in. And as Facebook phased that out, Facebook noticed that people logged into the platforms for longer and had a better experience. Now you've probably experienced this in YouTube where you go down the YouTube rabbit hole and an hour later, six hours later, a thousand hours later, it's just really interesting content and you're interested in it. It's because Facebook figured this out and YouTube copied them. Now, TikTok is the single most aggressive version of broad targeting and what we ultimately have to remember is that broad targeting basically lets your paid ads function like organic. You see content based on the content you want to see. The power of this for advertisers is that you no longer have to pay extra to guess at what people want to see by renting data through Facebook's platform where ultimately you're paying a premium buying that information from some third party based on low quality signals of intent. If somebody's in an interest group, it doesn't mean they want to buy something. It doesn't even mean that they're interested. Remember, one third of the people in an interest group are there by mistake anyway. And half of them are there because they don't like something and they've mentioned that they don't like it. The point of broad targeting is ultimately to allow Facebook to use your content to meet their business objectives. If you're not using broad targeting, basically what you're saying is, I don't respect my business partner's business objectives. I'm going to disrespect my partner as a standard operating procedure and I don't want the world's smartest machine learning AI that has more data than Amazon and Google put together. I don't want to leverage their engineering team to be my sales department. No, no, no. I'm smarter than all of them. I'm going to pay extra because somehow that's a good idea. Have you noticed your CPMs creeping up over the last few years? Maybe a cost of customer acquisitions getting higher. You also notice that the only people that say that are the same ones who still say you should use Facebook like it was Google 10 years ago. That's not a complete coincidence. Hey guys, I know you love this video. Do me a favor real quick. Go ahead, smash the like button, subscribe so you don't miss anything else. I love doing this content for you and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you really enjoy this type of content, understand that this is only scratching the surface of what we get into in the Facebook Ads MBA program. If you want to invest in yourself so that you can ultimately work less and have more success with less stress by leveraging the machines the way they're designed to be used and leveraging the standard operating procedures and frameworks that build eight and nine figure businesses around the world and have done so for decades, check it out. It's the first link down in the description. I'd love to see you there. All the information for you to sign up and apply for it is right there and we'll see if it's the right for you. That being said, let's get back to the video. The potential of broad targeting. One of the beauties of broad targeting is that it can lead you to so much untapped potential. We had just talked about a little bit ago that when you're using retargeting audiences or lookalikes or interest groups or behaviors, what you're doing is you're taking a very low integrity data point to pay extra because remember, Facebook is just leasing that data from somebody else and they're passing it on to you and charging you a little bit of a tax on it. You're paying extra to exclude the vast majority of people that want to see your content. Now, the beauty of it is the potential of broad targeting is this. You can conquest customers from other brands. Now we've already talked about this a little bit, but let me dive deeper into this. You think of your funnel as somebody finds out about the brand, then we overcome up some objections, we show some value, we get them to a landing page, and hopefully it has a good CRO, and we get a great conversion rate, and we make a sale where a ROAS looks good. Literally everything in that entire paragraph or sentence is complete trash. None of what I just said there is actually how any of it works. And people that tell you that that's how it works have no clue what they're talking about. Here's the way it actually works. The customer journey is decades long. People show signals for years. People's buying behaviors actually repeated pattern that happens seasonally. 
Now, it's not just in spring I do this and in fall I do this. There's many things that happen along that journey. Every single user has some sort of unique characteristic to how they do things, but they do things in the same way often. You might be the kind of person that sees an ad or has a conversation with somebody, Googles things for a little bit of a while and adds some stuff to cart and comes back later and then joins a couple of things, waits for a nice little coupon code to come in and then comes in and maybe buys. Now, what you buy versus the initial product that you found might have nothing to do with each other. Somebody made you market aware. Somebody else made you understand the values and the benefits and what was important to you. And then through your own research, you found the brands that ultimately met your needs. And then based off of the CRM marketing that somebody gave you at the price, you decided to make a decision. You might also be somebody who says, every spring I try to get ready for a summer and every few years my shoes wear out. And Facebook notices, hey, you're in a shoe store. It's spring. Last year you didn't do this. Two years ago you did. Four years ago you did. Six years ago you did. Seven, nine, ten, twelve years ago you did. Remember, Facebook has had your location information for over a decade. They know where you are in the world. They know what you're spending even when you're not spending that money on Facebook because they have your credit card information. They have your tax information. They have your location information. They know what you've been saying to people inside of Messenger, inside of WhatsApp, the things you've written in comment sections. They know your behavior. People have personalities. Facebook Facebook knows yours and is really, really good at ultimately, and this is a terrible way of putting it, but let's be completely honest, conditioning people to take actions that marketers want them to. You can look to the Cambridge Analytica scandal as a prime example of what happened and they didn't even have advanced matching yet back then. So let's get down to the real brass tacks. What kind of results have you gotten with Broad? I'll tell you from my own personal experience. I've helped people inside the Facebook Ads MBA program start at 50 bucks a day, get to 2,000. I've taken brands from 50,000 a month to over a million a week. I've done it year in, year out for a better part of a decade now. I've been using Broad Targeting for six years. I've spent hundreds of millions of dollars inside of broad targeting. The honest truth is I would not let anybody use something like an interest group in one of my ad accounts. I don't want to pay extra to make work harder and produce ad fatigue so that ultimately I reach fewer people and create less incremental lift across my omni-channel marketing mix. And this ultimately gets us down to the last point. The power of broad targeting, the results that it drives, isn't necessarily just reflected in the row ads of your Facebook ad account. And to quote my buddy Dylan Ander, conversion rate. He's one of the best CRO guys in the world from splittesting.com and he knows conversion rate is a completely trash metric. Do you want a better conversion rate or do you want way more volume and way more sales but maybe your rate goes down because it's a fraction. If the number on top, the numerator, rises faster than the denominator, your fraction looks worse. Here's the thing, who cares? It's about the money in your bank account. The point here is broad targeting can ultimately amplify your entire business. And the results of it aren't just seen inside of your ad account by ROAS. It's what happens to your search, what happens to your organic direct, what happens to your email open rate, what happens to the opportunity your business has with respect to the monetization of attention. Broad is ultimately the pinnacle, absolute best way of using Facebook because it meets the way that Facebook was written. It leverages Facebook's code to ultimately let Facebook show content to people to make their Facebook experience better. All you have to do now is make sure that the content that you give Facebook and what it spends on your behalf to buy attention inside the platform not only meets their objectives, but also your own. And when you become simpatico, when you find a partner in business where you have respect for each other, you're gonna be a lot happier. You're gonna work a lot less and your bank account is gonna look a lot nicer. So to wrap this up, broad targeting is not only cheaper, it also amplifies the rest of your business far better. It makes the concept of creative fatigue completely obsolete and it lets you move away from silly things like conversion rate and click-through rate and CPC and ROAS, all of these metrics that have nothing to do with how e-commerce operates and how OCPM platforms 
function. And instead of you trying to be really smart so you can work harder and harder as the costs go up and you claim to be a victim, now you can leverage Facebook's engineering team to be your sales department, which means that the world's greatest machine learning and human behavior conditioning device based on artificial intelligence and a data set going back over a decade with more information than Google and Amazon will ever have is a tool that's working for you instead of against you. And if you're not leveraging that, maybe it's time to move on past 2013 Facebook tactics. It's 2023. What are you doing? Now, I know that this video has been really helpful for you and I hope you've enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun talking about this one and I know you could be literally anywhere on the internet right now spending your time doing anything and you're here with me today. And for that, I want to say thank you. I've been really trying to make sure that this video, these podcasts are of the utmost value. It would mean the world to me again if you can hit like, if you can hit subscribe, if you can share this thing, if you give me a five star review, if you can tell your friends, if you can do everything to tell the these platforms and give them the signal that you love what's coming out of this because every little bit of it not only helps you, but ultimately helps everybody else. And I'm on a mission to make all of the used car salesmen doing the rain dance until the hurricane comes and then take credit for the flood to put them out of business because ultimately they're flexing on how much money they make by making success for their clients far more difficult and they do way more harm than good. And if you know anybody giving advice that diametrically opposes what we talked about here today, go ahead and tag them or drop in the comment section what they had to say. And I will let you know where they've seemed to have lost the path. There are very few people that have been in the game as long as I have that disagree with what I have to say. And the vast majority of people that teach differently than this, well, where they're at in their career today, I was farther along in mine before they started. And that's not a flex. That's just to give context that I've made more mistakes and then shots they've taken. Every one of their bright ideas is something I've already spent 10 million or a hundred million dollars learning from. And I'm here to save you that mistake and that heartache. Cause remember, I've driven billions in revenue for clients around the world. I've had thousands of success stories on six different continents. Nobody in Antarctica yet, I know. But the point is, I'm here to help. If you don't like what I have to say, please let me know where you disagree. And if you've got something that's gonna teach me something, I would love it. Because every time somebody challenges me and I get to learn and grow is an opportunity to become better. And that means I can help out more of you all. So that being said, I just wanna say thank you so much. And until next time, I'll see you on the internet.